morning. Good morning. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 We welcome you to this Missionary Sunday. Amen. Give God some praise today. We are missionaries walking and living in God's joy. Our morning worship service will go as follow. Our morning hymn will be Jesus, the light of the world. That will be hymn number 112. Followed by the invocation by Sister Victoria Gary. Our prayer response will be, there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Hymn number 196. Our morning scripture reading will be from Philippians chapter 4 verses 1 through 4 by Sister Veda Shelton. Followed by the, followed by from all that dwells below the sky, and then the summary of the Decalogue. Give God some praise this morning, St. Paul. Good morning, church. Good morning. These are your announcements. The Kentucky Conference Women's Missionary Society present the annual seasonal feast at 12 noon at First Christian Church, 160 Lexington Street, Versailles, Kentucky, on April the 20th, which is Saturday. Ticket donation is $15. Veda Shelton, President, Kentucky Conference Women's Missionary Society. April 24th, Reverend Dr. Stephanie M. Raglan will be preaching at St. Paul AME Church for Sales, Kentucky, 215 Douglas Avenue at 7 p.m. April 27th, St. Paul AME for Sales, Kentucky will sponsor a workshop by the Kentucky Conference Lay Organization from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Our 13th District President, Chris Wilson, will present vital information on the General Conference and the process for new bills affecting our doctrine and discipline. To 13th District WMS and guests, please save the date, May 17, 2024. Registration is now open for the 13th District WMS virtual retreat to take place at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on May 17th. Registration is $25. Please see Sister Betty Young to register. Registration payable to the Kentucky Conference WMS Cash app can be used as well, and the cash app is KYWMS21. Link information to be announced. Our regular weekly activities, please join us each Sunday for our church school at 9.30 a.m. in person. Regular Sunday worship is at 11 a.m. in person. Join us on Tuesday for Noonday Bible Study on Zoom at 12 noon. Exhorter Doris Coffey, Director. Join us on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. for Pastor's Bible Study on Zoom. Saturday's Fellowship Choir Rehearsal at 11 a.m. and the Youth Choir Rehearsal is at 12 noon. These are your announcements. Reverend Raglan, do you have any announcements? Oh, we have one more. Our CPR class. On Saturday, April the 20th, there will be a CPR class conducted by the Lexington Fire Department. They are only able to take six people at a time. The class will start at one o'clock at the Jefferson Street Station. If you need transportation beforehand, please meet Mr. Tim Coleman at the church at 1230. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Somebody ought to bless his holy name. Y'all, quiet. Come on. Make some noise in this place. Amen. I'm not preaching, but guess what? He said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And so if you've got some breath in your body, you ought to make some noise in this place. Come on and make some Holy Ghost noise. Give God some praise in this place. Yes, it's missionary day. But if it had not been for the Lord, there would be no missionaries. Amen. 
Amen. Just some announcements to make. Um, the first announcement I want to make is that um, uh, Sister Marjorie Johnson, I went by to see her. I go see her every month uh, as I go and visit all of the, those who are sick and shut in. And her, along with Sister, um, Sister Eleanor Whitley, wanted to tell the church that they are still holding on in Amen. Jesus' name. And, Amen. And um, it's always a pleasure to go and to, to fellowship with them and commune with them. And, uh, but they just wanted me to shout out for them uh, that they are still alive and still kicking. Amen. And that they are still trusting and believing uh, that God can and that God will yeah. answer prayers. And so in your time, if you have a moment, just pick up the telephone to call or send a card or stop by and see them. Amen. I'm sure that they would be glad to see somebody else besides the pastor, amen, amen. of this church. But they send their love. So that was my first announcement. And the second announcement I want to make is that the Steward and Finance uh, Committee, we will meet at 7.30 on Thursday evening on Zoom instead of 7 because of the prayer call. The prayer call is at 7. And so the Steward and Finance, we will meet at 7.30. Uh, your pastor is also preaching on April the 22nd at Asbury Theological Seminary in Wilmore, Kentucky at 6.30 p.m. That week is going to be busy for the pastor, and I'm also preaching um, on that Friday night, April the 26th, at Bethel uh, Methodist Church in Nicholasville, Kentucky. Um, and then I want to say Women's Day. Come on, somebody ought to shout Women's Day. Women's Day. Women's Day is going to be held here at Historic St. Paul on May the 19th. Um, all day, we've got festivities going on, and our guest uh, will be none other than the Reverend Dr. Maxine L. Thomas who is the uh, assistant pastor at uh, St. Andrew AME Church in Memphis, Tennessee. And so I just wanted to put that out there. I know we'll be having rehearsals leading up to that day, and we need all women to come and be a part. Yeah, you may not be able to carry a tune, but he said, uh, you know, just make a joyful noise Amen. unto the Lord. And if we come with a willing heart, God can and God will. God bless you, and may heaven smile down upon you. Praise God. of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those who be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he is the marvelous thing. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth sing praise. Amen. We will sing number hymn number 112, Jesus, the light of the world.
Dear Lord, as you call missionaries to be witness in, throughout the world and in communities in the world, we ask that you protect them, you keep them safe in your care, and you keep, keep them mindful of the, to hold on their faith as they carry out their tasks in service and introduce maybe to people who you are, your love, and your grace. And Lord, I thank you that I am part of this great church missionary society here at St. Paul, historic St. Paul AME. And Lord, until the day I die, I ask that you help me hold on my faith and you increase my test as I go out and be a missionary and a witness of your love and grace. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Our scripture lesson comes from Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses one through four. And I will be reading the New International Version. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Udiah, and I plead with Sintash to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. I read Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 4. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his holy word. to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. recognition of guests and visitors by Sister Tammy Terry. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our missionary day. I hope you enjoy the service. Do we have any visitors in the house? <laughs> no.
our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. Good morning to my church family today. And yes, it is Missionary Day. We are all so proud to be here and to represent the missionaries. Now's the time in our service where we pause so we all can take an active part. It's time for our offerings and our tithes. As we stand all over the church, we ask you to start from the back, come down the side aisles to bring your gifts to the altar. And as always, there are other ways to give. If you have a Breeze account, please log in to Breeze and select Donate. You may mail your gifts to Historic St. Paul AME Church at 251 North Upper Street, Lexington, 40507. Our Zelle account is finance at spame.org. I'm asking for volunteers to, oh, we have volunteers. Awesome, awesome. Yes, yes. Uh, our tray today goes to the Missionary Society. The assessment for missionaries today is $25. In addition to our Zelle and our Breeze options for giving, the Cash App is dollar sign Spam Lex or donate at spame.org. And as always, we thank you for your support and for your giving. May the Lord keep you safe and well. And a little traveling music.
will now have the altar call by Sister Paulette Coleman, followed by our memorial by Sister Letitia Coleman. Uh, we've come to uh, the, uh, the part of our worship experience where you're invited to come to the altar and for the song that we're going to sing is, is have a little talk with Jesus and at this time you all may come and have a little talk with Jesus and you know tell him everything that's going on with you and when you do that, just leave what you, you know, tell Jesus. Just leave it at the altar. Just leave it at the altar. So now, I'll open up. I invite you down.
let us pray. From everlasting to everlasting, all wise God. The giver of life, the sustainer, the great I am, the one who was, who is, and is yet to come. We come this morning, oh God, as empty pitchers waiting to be filled. Thanking you, oh God, that you woke us up early this morning, allowing our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. We thank you, oh God, because, Lord, you gave us the activities of our limbs uh, that were clothed in our bright minds. And then, Lord God, we've come gathered in this place to worship you in truth and in spirit. And so, God, we come on behalf of these, your children, who have come assembled at this altar today. Lord, just as the songwriter said, just a little talk with Jesus. Uh, tell him all about our troubles and he'll hear our faintest cry. And he'll answer by and by. And so, God, we trust that you have heard the cries of your people. We pray, oh God, that you will hear us and that you will answer our prayers. Realizing and knowing, oh God, that you may not come when we want you, but Lord, we know that you'll show up and show out right on time. Lord, I pray for the absent part of this church. I pray for those who are sick and bereaved, oh God. Lord, I pray for those that just don't have a mind to come to your house or even in the Zoom to worship you, oh God. And I pray, Father God, for the one that will stand and proclaim your word today. I pray, Father God, that you would just cover her by the blood, that she might preach an uncompromising gospel. Anoint her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. The Lord, when we leave this place, will have our marching orders of how to go out and to be the missionaries that you called us to be. Now forgive us of all of our sins by word, thought, or deed. Lord, if you don't do anything else for us, we're thankful that you've already done enough. Bless us, O oh God, now and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. life and legacy of our missionaries who have transcended to heaven. God has his plans and what it and what if we would our sight be too too blind to see. Their full frustration. Cannot he who made it solve the mystery? One whom we love has fallen asleep, not died. Although her calm be deep some news unknown and strange surprise in heaven holds erect her eyes. And can you blame her that her gaze is turned away from earthly ways? When to her eyes God's light and love have given the view of things above. A gentle spirit, sweetly good, the pearl of pre a precious womanhood, who heard the voice of duty clear and found her mission soon and near. So sped, sped she in her master's work, too busy and too brave to shirk, when through the silence, dusk and dim, God called her and she fled to him. We wonder at the earthly call, and tears of sorrow can but fall, but faith, sweet faith, is over all. She went her way, but oh, she tried 
the path that led her straight to God. Sister Vernon Jean Blackburn, wife of Brother Myron Coleman, departed this earthly life on February 26, 2024. A dedicated member of historic St. Paul Amy Church, Lexington, Kentucky, a faithful member of the Ross Greenville Women's Missionary Society at St. Paul, serving as the first vice president. She also was a member of the Kentucky Annual Conference WMS. She served as, at St. Paul as a trustee, president of the fellowship choir, and the soloist. Jean also served as assistant director of the Daughters of Miriam, our senior liturgical dance ministry for 12 years, a member of the local lay and women's ministry. She was a committed, dedicated, hard worker and whatever she was involved in. We miss her and cherish her. All the members with, we had with her, may she rest in peace. Sister Tammy will light the candle in Sister Jean Coleman's memory at this time. Sister Ella Jean Williams Smith, wife of Brother Kenty Smith, mother and grandmother, gained her wings on February the, February the 25th, 2023. Ella Jean was a member of the Ross Greenfield Women's Missionary Society, a life member of the WMS and the AME Church, holding multiple positions on the local level at his historic St. Paul as a missionary president, as well as a local YPD director. She also served many years as a Kentucky Conference YPD director, D director, and later as the Kentucky Annual Conference Women's Missionary Society president. She also served at Historic St. Paul as a steward, chairman of the finance committee, member of the fellowship choir, Sunday school pianist, teacher, and was active in youth and young adult projects. In addition to her nursing career, Ella was a pillar in her community, affectionately known in her community as Ella Jean by her peers as Miss Ella by the youth that was involved with, with her. Ella's missed and may she rest in eternal rest. Peace. Beta will, Sister Beta will now light the candle in remember of Sister Ella Jean. In addition to her nursing career, Ella was a pillar in her community, affectionately known in her community as Ella Jean by her peers and, and, Ms. Ella, and, and Ms. Ella by the youth that was involved with Ella. It's missed, and she's missed, and may she rest in peace. Sister Beta will, has lighted, lit the candle in memory of Sister Ella Jean. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The poem that I read earlier was from <clears throat> Paul Lawrence Dunbar, God Has His Plans. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. We will now have the introduction of the preacher by Sister Carrie Newton, who is the president of the Ross Greenfield WMS, followed by the sermonic selection by the Fellowship Choir. Well, it's not afternoon yet. It's still morning uh, to... Uh, Reverend Dr. Stephanie, I hate saying all of your whole name is so long, <laughs> our pastor, and to Reverend Frazier, who's online, and to his daughter, Doris Coffey. It is now time for me to introduce our speaker, uh, our minister. She's one that we all know. She's grown up with many of us, but she is the daughter of our own Miss Letitia Coleman. She yeah. is the sister of our own Mr. Tim Coleman. So you know, it's a family affair. <laughs> as we say that because they believe in the Lord in many, many ways. She is married and she has three children. Three children. Charles oh. Jr., Chris, and Lutetia, named after her grandmother. Um, Mary Louise is what we always called her. Never, you know, her full name, Mary Louise Coleman Bowen. She's a native of Lexington, Kentucky, a former member of Queen Chapel Amy Church, former officer of the Connectional Richmond Allen Youth Council, 13th Episcopal District YPD president and a state president, and she's a graduate of Tate's Creek. So she is a Emmy. From the born she was born, from the day she was born up till now, every till she dies, she will still be an AME. <laughs> but little people didn't really know that she was in the military 20 years. Oh, we man. need to get a clap for that. Because how many African American women belong or join the military? So that is some 20 years. She's also an educator. An educator. Think an educator. Which means that she loves children. She wants them to learn. She wants them to do something with their life. She has retired from the Jefferson County Public Schools in Louisville, you know, that means 28 years <laughs> when you retire. And, but she's still working. She's a member of State of Phi Beta Sorority and is a licensed minister, a licensed minister in the state of Kentucky. So she didn't leave home. She's still here. She's been on many boards, many organizations, you know, just a lot of stuff. But that's all fine and good. But we know that she's a child of God. We know that she has a ministry that she loves. And when you finish hearing her, you will say, God is in her heart. God loves her. God continues to want her to do many, many things. Many, many things. Because she's still here after being in the military. Yeah, that's something if you've been in the military. And she can still smile. <laughs> and and, and there's, no, there's no injury. So, you know, we, we, we need to thank God for that, that he protected her and brought her back home safely. So on the next selection, we will hear Minister Mary Lou Oh, I know her as Mary Louise.
talk about God, to lift up the name of Jesus, Amen. to sing, to testify. Amen. I'm blessing my God, Amen. the one I say I love. Amen. Right. Amen. And the greatest blessing I've received so far is that young lady right there praying. She said, it's an honor and a privilege that Amen. I get to be a Amen. missionary. Amen. 
And as a people, whether it's people of God, people of color, we've got to begin to understand that humility is how Jesus walked in the earth. Amen. And it's through his humility that he was over, able to overcome. All right. And how he was able, through the empowerment of God, to do what he did for us. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for the humility that you walk in and the gentle spirit that you hold. Amen. It's God, amen. amen. It's God. Amen. Amen. Well, greetings. First of all, I know being back in the AMB church, you know, you got to give recognition. That's important, but it is important. Mm -hmm. Give honor to whom honor is due. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm excited because, you know, to Reverend Dr. Stephanie Raglan, you know, head pastor of the historic St. Paul AMB church, and to the man of the house, Mr. Raglan. I, I know, I know, I know. Oh, there he is back there. See, that's a good man. <laughs> no, not, not because he's sitting in the back, but because he's got his wife's back. Amen. Amen. Because a woman of God cannot serve fully if there's not a man of God in the house to hold her hands up and encourage and pray for her Amen. and support Amen. her. Amen. Amen. That's not my message, but <laughs> sometimes people talk. Amen. I want to say thank you for the opportunity, and I don't take it lightly. To the women in white, uh -huh. you gracious ladies, you beautiful souls, that yeah. have made a decision that you wanted to serve God and just what some people see as a very basic way of giving and doing. But we're going to find out through the word that that's not basic at all, because there's nothing basic about Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. So, as I said, uh, and she read it. I don't know where she got that picture from. <laughs> They stole that picture from somewhere because, oh, yeah, glory to God. <laughs> I love you, though. <laughs> but uh, I bring you greetings uh, from my husband, Pastor Charles Bowen. He's my pastor, uh, Shepherd's Touch Ministry in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we have been serving as, as youth pastors and serving with other men and women of God for years, and it has been an absolute blessing. Uh, there's no greater calling than to preach the word of God. Right. And what you're going to find out today that even though you may not have the title of pastor, minister, evangelist, you are commissioned to share and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you know, I was born and raised in the AME church, like she says, you know, Quinn Chapel. Uh, and being trained up in the church is uh, a real blessing because it taught me a lot of things I was able not just to use in the church, but to use in the real world. It gave me a lot of leadership skills. And so I want to encourage you that our, our parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, encourage young people to come to church. Amen. You come. If it's good enough for you, isn't it good enough for them? Because ultimately, the most important place they can be is in the house of God. Amen. Amen. So encourage them to come in. I also, <laughs> I, I had an opportunity to uh, meet pastors, twins, and I'm telling you, my hat is all, I salute any woman that can carry and birth and raise two babies at one time. Yeah, I got three, but I had them one at a time. It takes a special anointing for that. So to the twins, thank you for your service and what you do. You are planting seeds not just for yourself, but for your generation. Amen. The greatest witness is your life.
They may not be following you to church, but they're watching you. All right. Because the anointing and the hand of God is on your life for the good. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. Amen. And I know you don't heard that from mama and daddy already, but sometimes it takes somebody outside to tell you. I haven't started my sermon, but I just wanted to get all that out. Glory to God. So will you pray with me? Father God, I thank you for your mercy and your grace, Lord. Father, use my lips. Let them speak words of encouragement and righteousness into your people, Father. Allow your people to have ears to hear and a heart to receive. Thank you, Father, for correction that we might grow in the fear and admonition of you, Lord God. Let it be all of you and none of me, Father God, because your precious people mean the world to you, that you would send Jesus Christ to die just for them. Father, I give you glory, honor, and praise. Now I bind every demonic spirit, every naysayer, everyone that refuses to walk in faith today, Father, I bind that spirit. You have no place in this house. I command the spirit of peace, joy, and love to be released right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. See, I don't play with no devil. I don't play with him. I don't have time. I'm too old. I I am. Not as old as my mother, but... uh, She's been blessed. Amen. She's been blessed. Amen. Amen. But we as believers have got to understand there's three things we need to stand on and understand. Stand on and understand. Number one, we serve a good God. All right. God is a good God, and the devil is a bad devil. Uh-huh. Now, society today would tell you that God is relevant. You are God, Buddha's God, Muhammad's God. But they're aligned, so is the devil. They'll tell you that the devil is just where you are right now when you have hard times. Mm. And that's not true. The devil is Satan. He is the father of lies. Amen. And he is spewing the lies and the hatred in society to stop the ears of not only believers who are not reading his word and hearing his word in church, but for those who are still lost. The other thing you need to understand is that God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Amen. We lie sometimes. How many of you don't lie? Okay, thank you for not lying. (laughs) We do. It it may be in what we would call a fraudulent slip or, you know, a faux pas, something like that. But sometimes we just lie. Whether we're not fulfilling the word that we gave someone or misinformation, we lie. But the word of God, It's always truth. And in Hebrews 6 and 13, it said he swore to his own self. Why? Because there was no one greater to swear to. So God can never lie. And the third thing is that God's word is strong. His word is strong. Now, your Bible may not look like my Bible. It may not be pink, but that's okay. But I know what's on the inside of here. God's word is strong for every situation in your life. There's nothing that's ever happened under the sun that God has not addressed. All right. And you name it, it's in here. The word gives us finality on any situation. So God's word is strong. Why? Because he can't lie. Why? Because he's a good God. 
Amen. And he never changes. He's the same today, tomorrow, and forever. Uh -huh. So those are three things that we've got to settle in our spirit as believers. We've got to settle that. Because society and TV and, and uh, social media is telling us things that, that are lies straight from the pit of hell. And people are believing it. People in church, young people are biting onto it because we as seniors are not sharing the gospel or we're not living it in front of those young people. Amen. So their excuse or what they're seeing is, if you want me to come to church, but you're not living what you say you want me to do, why should I come? Why don't I just get an extra few hours of sleep and do what I want to do? Can you blame them if that's the truth? So it's important as believers that we're preaching and walking out the word to the best of our ability. And then when our ability has run out, God will begin to empower us with his anointing to do what we need to do. Now, your theme today is, is amazing because it talks about the joy. The joy, the Lord is your strength. So those times when you do feel weak, like you can't make it through a situation where you're believing God for healing, but maybe you're in pain and it's, the joy's not showing on your face, that's when you say, God, I need you to take over. Amen. And you allow the joy of the Lord to be your strength. Amen. See, the greatest witness is your life. You can quote Genesis to Revelation, but if you're not living anything, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Amen. So I know they read this. I want to read this again. And the theme comes from Philippians 1, 4, and 1, and it says, Therefore, my brethren... Dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. We're God's joy and crown. We are God's joy and crown. Now, you know, Philippians was a book that was written to the Philippians to encourage them. There was a lot going on, uh, but the letter was written to Philippians to encourage the people. And it goes on to read, <clears throat> so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, Adias, and beseech Syntyche, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. That means that you be walking on one accord. Church, mm -hmm. that we walk together on one accord. A house divided against itself can't stand. And so that's why we see so many churches having to close their doors. And that hurts my heart. So I know that hurts the heart of God. Why? Because we're not operating in one accord. You don't have to like the pastor, but you better love her if you want to get into heaven. <laughs> Amen. Let me say that again. You don't have to like the pastor, but you got to love her if you want to get into heaven. And if you want this church to grow, if you want young people to come, if you want to see signs, wonders, and miracles in this house, you have got to get on one accord and follow the woman of God that's been placed on this house. Amen. Follow her as she follows Christ. Amen. Because God is talking to her. God is talking to her. Your job for your woman of God and the man of God that walks with her is to pray for her. Amen. Encourage her. Bless her. Don't just give her a chicken leg. <laughs> Instead of that $50 you want to spend at Walmart on cupcakes and cake and pie because you just wanted a snack at night, Bless the woman of God. 
Amen. The anointing is on her life. It will multiply what you've sown into her. Pray for her husband. Pray for her children. Mm -hmm. Because what we haven't really discussed a lot in church, my message is changing a little bit, is that there's supernatural spiritual warfare taking place. Amen. If you wonder why people are not coming to church, if you wonder why social media seems to be taking over people's lives, it is a tool by which the enemy is using and the church is not fighting back. Amen. How do you fight back? You speak the word in season and out of season. Whether you're with your family, whether with your co-workers or your neighbors, you be consistent with not only speaking, but walking out the word. As missionaries, you are called. You are called, it is a calling. To preach the gospel. Whether that be handing someone a piece of change. Whether it's handing them a plate. Whether it's going to visit someone. Whether it's telling somebody God loves you. In school, I taught high school, I've been retired since August. And, and I still hear from a lot of my kids, and it just blesses my soul. Uh, I would get in class because I had the leisure, and I say leisure because uh, teaching English, I could talk about anything and get away with it. <laughs> and they knew that I loved them. They didn't always know what drove me, but they knew that I believed in God. They knew that Christianity was real. Amen. And for some of them, they've never seen that. Mm. Never. And I never in my life thought I would see a, a, a time where there were more kids who had never been to church who had been than who had been. Mm. And that's where we're living at. You may think that because you're 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, that you cannot impress upon a young person or someone your age. But once again, the greatest witness is your life. Walk it out according to what God has impressed upon your spirit to do. And then use the word. God cannot lie. And this word is strong. It's if, if he said he would do it, he'll do it. So the last part of Philippians 4 says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are written in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. If you have nothing else to smile about, God has woke you up. Put life in your body. Allow the blood to run for you to get able to get up and move and to speak and to do and to eat. Amen. Rejoice in that. Well, you don't know how I feel. No, but you don't know how I feel either. You don't know how others around you feel. But when you walk in humility, you understand that it's not about you. Amen. It's about him. All right. It's about making sure that souls do not go to hell because we fail to do our part. Amen. There's blood required on our hands when we fail to speak and to do what God has commanded us to do. Yeah. You're not too young and you're never too old. There's something to be said for wisdom and years. Well, you don't understand. These young people just don't listen. Well, you just heard me. Sometimes you don't understand. Sometimes old folks don't listen. Amen. All right. Yeah. You say that again. Sometimes old, and I'll put myself in that category because I can get AARP now. Amen. 
Sometimes I have conversations with God, and I'm like, God, well, why, why are my kids? My kids are all grown. All three of them are grown. They're all serving God, and that's like my greatest testimony, and you know. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, God, why don't, why don't they do this? And, and God will come back and say, well, Mary, why aren't you doing this? I'm like, see, that's not even the question I asked you, God. <laughs> and we do that to God. Amen. We go to God asking him questions with our answer already pre-prepared in our heads. And I just had to say, I'm sorry, God, like, help me. I mind my own business. Because if we would only mind our own business, stay in our lane of faith, Amen. Because as missionaries, your lane is wide, and it's in need. The world needs what you have to offer. Never, whether you are a computer specialist, whether you're a teacher, whether you drywall and brick lay bricks, those are all tools that can be used to witness the gospel. We think that being up in the pulpit, and, you know, people lo love to love titles, and but you don't know what the doctor had to do to get that title. Mm -hmm. You don't know the endless hours poured through books, articles, prayers, tears, dissertations. just for some of you to say, oh, I'll listen to her now. <laughs> Amen. But the anointing was already in there. Oh, she just told you to say it. She didn't tell me to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe in order because heaven is a place of order. Yeah. <laughs> it is a place of order and I asked the woman of God, what it, you know, what is it, you know, is there anything you want me to do, time limit, you know, so y'all, I got like 10 pages of notes, so I get to keep y'all here until I'm finished with them, like, somebody back here like, no, you not, <laughs> I won't, but it's important that we understand that those of you that are sitting here right now and hearing this. God loves you. Right now, right here where you are, walking in your life, God loves you. He sees the struggle that you go through. All he's asking you to do is to be obedient to his voice. But to hear his voice, you've got to be in church. So what about those that aren't here? When God told you to say something to them, when God told you to invite them, and you did it. Oh, I don't like our choir. <laughs> it ain't even about the choir. It's about the anointed word of God that destroys yokes and bondages. So whether it's one person standing up here or 25, the anointing is on the word of God. Now, God can anoint the lips of a musician or, you know, a psalmist to sing, to release an anointing on the people. But it's the word of God that needs to be heard. Ladies, your mission we talk about joy. Sometimes we forget that happiness is not the same as joy. Happiness is an emotional state. And we know emotions change. Emotions change. Especially if you're scrolling on your phone. Yeah, y'all, some of y'all are saying that, but some of you laugh because you know that's what. You go scrolling on your phone. You're like, ooh, what is that? You go, ah, <laughs> that's so funny. And you go, all kinds of emotions. Amen. 
Amen. So emotions change. But the word of God never changes. It's characterized by feelings. Feeling of happiness, sadness, frustration. Feelings change. Joy is eternal. Joy is eternal. The definition for joy is it's a deeper place that comes from within, from a sense of purpose. Joy is a practice. It is a behavior. It is a deliberate and intentional thing. Let me say that again. Joy is deliberate and intentional. A person pursues happiness but chooses joy. Like when you order something off of Amazon because it looks so good in the picture and you click that button and you get it on your front door, you're so excited, especially if it's something to wear, you know. For some of you guys, sometimes you like gadgets. You're like, ooh, I could use this gadget. This is, because I'm talking about my husband now. He like all kinds of gadgets, right? And half the stuff don't even work, or he use it one time, and then, you know. Uh, but I know none of you men are like that. But I'm going to keep talking about him, too. Uh, so he gets the gadget in, he opens the box, and it's like, this, this don't even work the same. Like, and he was so excited about getting it. I mean, just really happy. This is just bringing him so much happiness. And then he gets it, and it's disappointing. And most of our happiness is that type of happiness. It's that level one uh, happiness of, of getting material things, getting that piece of pecan pie or chest pie, or cheesecake, or pasta, or fried chicken, or steak, whatever it is that you know you love. It's that thing. And then when you're done with it, it's all done. There is no more. And then there's this kind of letdown. But when you choose joy, James 1 and 2 says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, because joy has to be chosen. Amen. It's not temporary. Uh -huh. It has to be embedded on the inside of you, which means it's a decision. That regardless of how I feel, I'm going to walk in the love of God today with my coworkers. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what traffic is like. I'm not flipping anybody off because that's not of God. I'm not cussing nobody out because I'm frustrated. That's not of God. That's my flesh, and I'm not happy. See, when we look at joy for what it is, that it's a decision, then we understand that we can achieve joy every day. One of the things that missionaries endure a lot of is they feel like they, they get a lot of rejection because they're not seen as much or they're in the trenches so they don't necessarily get that recognition. Well, first of all, let me say, if you're doing it for the recognition, don't do it, baby. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. But if it's do, you're doing it because you want to change and impact lives, serve. Serve. A missionary is a member that is sent into an area in order to promote the Christian faith to provide services to the community, whether it be through education or literacy or health care or sandwiches or whatever God has commanded you to do. 
whatever it is. But understand that it's no small task what God has commanded you to do. And it's going to take joy. It's going to take you operating in joy for you to be successful at it. Because as soon as you say yes, yes, I will go serve some sandwiches down there to the, to the kitchen. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be every week. But when you make a decision to serve someone else, to meet the spiritual needs of someone else, God will meet you right where you are. And the joy that you feel for giving is unbelievable. God says that joy is, is the heart, and, but we look at happiness is on the face. Joy is of the soul, but happiness is in a moment. Joy is sacrifice. Happiness is just pleasure. Because just like that piece of cake or piece of pie, it goes away quickly. And it often leaves residue. In today's society, I want to encourage you ladies to do what Matthew 25 and 35 has commanded you to do. It says, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Now, prison ministry is a, a huge part of what I do nowadays. I always say they're a captive audience. And I don't do it as a joke. Okay, maybe I do. But they are a captive audience. Why? Where are they going to go? And because most of them have finally gotten still enough to hear the voice of God. And so when we go in to minister to them, they're open. They're wide open. There are those that are, are, are giving their lives over to Christ for the very first time. Some of them, tat tattoos all over their face. But streaming tears of joy. Because God saw fit to send someone in there to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. We can't be afraid to minister to people who don't look like us. And let me throw this in. Some of us that look like us are the biggest devils. The Bible tells us to know each other by the Spirit. So if God tells you to speak to someone that doesn't look like you, he has already prepared the way and prepared their hearts. He's just waiting for your obedience. Just like we want our children and our grandchildren to be obedient to us, God is saying, where's your obedience? That scripture goes on to say in 37, I was in prison and ye came to visit me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you water or something to drink? When did we see you a stranger? and invite you in, or needing clothes, and we clothe thee. Some of you got a closet full right now. Some of you missionaries, you don't wear white every Sunday. <laughs> you got a closet full of stuff. Hats, shoes, stuff with tags on it you ain't never wore. Some of you guys like that, I'm going to talk about my husband, he ain't here. So my husband's closet looks like this. One side, he has all his suits. Another side, he has casual shirts. Then he has shirts with long sleeves. Color-coordinated. 
Then with Bob, he has all his sweats, Nike, Adidas, Puma. He's an Adidas fan, for real, though. Okay? Then he has his jeans, and he has some work clothes hanging up. Who hangs up work clothes with Jesus? I ain't talking about that. But the point is, if we all look at what God has blessed us with, whether food or clothes, we have something that we can take out of that closet and sow into the life of someone. That's missionary work right there. You don't have to be a woman. You don't have to be wear white. Be about the business of our Father and do what God has commanded you to do. Do a clothes drive. Have people bring their clothes in that they're not wearing. Now, don't give dirty stuff. God ain't give you dirty stuff. Don't give dirty stuff. Don't give raggedy stuff. Don't give stuff that's 50 years old that you can't wear anymore. But give and get used to it. Why? Because the kingdom of God is counting souls. The last part of that scripture says, 40, and the king shall answer and say unto them, truly I tell you, whatever you have did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This is the great commission. God has entrusted you. God has entrusted you. Please don't take that lightly. God needs your hands and your feet. And when you become a willing vessel, when you are walking in humility and in the love of God, you understand that if God could save you, he could save anybody. If the cross is good enough for you, why is the cross good enough for all those others headed to hell? Don't allow the lives and the blood of others to be on your hands. Missionaries, rise up. You have been blessed and anointed to do the work of God. He will strengthen you. He will encourage you. And he'll be your God. Continue to do what he's called you to do. This church is not just a building by itself. It's every single one of you sitting in here who has said yes to Christ. And there might be somebody in here who has not said yes. Maybe you backslid. Maybe it wasn't even your intent. Maybe at some point you were hurt. Your emotions got in the way. Or maybe it was someone else's emotions that got in the way and, and conflict and controversy. Pulled you out. Maybe you're dealing with something today that you need God to intervene on your behalf. You need healing. You need instruction. You need peace. God is in this place. He's here for such a time as this. So I'm going to ask everyone to to close your eyes and bow your head. If there's anyone here, I'm going to give three invitations. If there's anyone here, you've not given your life to Christ. And you say, God, it's time. And I want to give my life to Christ. I need him in my life. If that's you, raise your hand. The second invitation, maybe you've backslidden and you've been away. And we've all done that at some point in time. We stepped away from the cross. 
and you say, God, it's time for me to come back home. I need you in my life. If that's you, raise your hand. The third invitation. If you say, being in this house is a place where I feel like I need to be spiritual. You want to make this house your spiritual home for now until Jesus calls us home. I know that Reverend Raglan would be happy to pull you into the sheep and to stand in the gap for you. Is there anyone? Now this last one. If any of you say, I need healing in my body and in my emotions right now. I just need peace in my mind. I need that joy and not just temporary happiness. But I need joy that will sustain me through the nights, through the days, regardless of what I'm going through. I just need that eternal joy that only Jesus gives. If that's you, raise your hand. Thank you, Father. Let me pray for you. Father God, I just thank you. Thank you, Father, that the word, Father, has been planted into your people, Lord God. That even when they're not in the house of God, that they'll choose joy. And they'll choose to listen and hear your word, Father. That they'll walk out the peace of God. That the word will become true to them and alive not never before. Father, I thank you that the anointing of God destroys yokes and bondages in the lives of those who may be struggling, Father, with anxiety, Father. And if that's you, you receive that for yourself. Anxiety is a temporary place, and every day you've got to address it with the joy of the Lord because it's the joy of the Lord that gives you the strength to endure. If there's someone with physical ailments and you're saying, God, I just need you to do this for me one more time. Just, just help me. Well, the one thing you have to understand is that when God says he heals, he heals. And so he may have already healed that area and you just haven't seen the physical manifestation but we walk by faith and not by sight. So every day you confess, I thank you for my healing, Lord. I give you praise and glory and honor that I'm whole, healed, and well in Jesus' name. And then one day you're going to look up and you're going to say, I don't have any pain there. I don't even have that issue anymore. Begin to water your prayers with praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. Not with strange fire, but with your prayers of thankfulness and love and joy and peace through the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you. May your word be embedded in the hearts of your people from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let the church say.
remarks. I would first like to thank you, Sister Mary, for that message. Uh, we'll have our remarks by our pre uh, WMS president, Sister Carrie Newton. Come on, Sister Carrie. I'd like to say thank you for joining us this day, and I definitely want to thank our minister for that wonderful message and the fact, you know, joy is different than happiness. And when you feel the joy, you will know it. Whether you've given somebody a cup of water or a piece of bread, you gave them some kind of joy, and you'll see that joy on their face. We as missionaries do things that sometimes people don't even know that we did it because we're not doing it for a show. We're doing it because we wanted to do it. Sometimes we're doing it in our neighborhood and you'd say, oh, you know what I did this today? You did? It's not all about doing it in the church. It's about doing it out there in the community. And so when we ask you to help us, we're using that to help others, not to help ourselves, but to help others. And we thank you all for being here. We thank the people on Zoom. We thank people on live, stream, or wherever. We want to say thank you. We had a wonderful message today, and my person beside me, I call her my daughter now because I only have a son and so she calls me every day and I say, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Yes, you know. So we want to both thank you, all the missionaries. And you know we have a life mover over there and she's still here. Amen. And, and we love her. Thank you very much. Amen. <laughs> We'll now have our remarks by Sister Veda Shelton. Would you like to have any remarks? She's our conference WMS president. Yeah. On behalf of the Kentucky Conference, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. And um, we just like to say that we enjoyed our minister's message today. And um, we're just glad to be here. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Veda. Uh, Pastor Ragler, did you have any remarks? Amen. 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 God is truly in the blessing business. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. This joy that I have. Yes. The world didn't give it to me, and the world's shown up. Can't take it away from me. Am I right about it? Come on. Amen. And we thank God. Uh, we thank God for our messenger today, Minister Coleman Bowen. Ooh, those are two, two last names I had to try to get together. But nevertheless, um, we say thank you for the word. And when we can realize and trust and know that it's not the building, Right. where the word resides uh -huh. but we as the people of God are the church amen, amen. and so as we go here this is just playgrounds or, or a sounding place for us to be able to come back home base I like to call it uh -huh. to come back and get our instructions from the coach right. and the coach's name is Jesus right. and then when Jesus the coach gives us our instruction then we go out with our bats and we play ball in the community. Amen? Amen. So remember that we are the church of God and that we go out and do the assignment that our hands have been assigned to do. So we thank you for, for this word today about joy. The devil is alive, but we trust and we believe that God can and God will because he's never failed us yet. Amen. To our president, uh, Sister Carrie Newton. Amen. And to our Kentucky Conference President, Sister Veda Shelton. I'm excited to have all these officers here at Historic St. Paul to our worship leader, our YPD director, 
Sister Chastity Goff, and amen. We bless God for you and to all of you who are present today. To God be the glory for all of the things he has done. God bless you. Amen. We will now have our missionary benediction. Could you please stand? Missionaries come down to the front and take a picture. <laughs>